Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you exactly how to create a professional looking Gantt chart right inside Power BI and we'll be using a free visual to do it. Whether you're a project manager trying to get a bird's eye view of your timelines or you just want a smarter way to track task progress, by the end of this video, you'll have a dynamic, interactive Gantt chart set up in your own Power BI report. Let's dive in so first things first, go ahead and open up your Power BI. If you're already familiar, you know the dashboard can look overwhelming at first glance, but don't worry, I'll walk you through exactly where to click. On the right side of your screen, you'll see the visualizations pane. This is where all those handy chart and graph options live, but instead of sticking with the basics, we're going to grab something a little more advanced. Look for the three little dots, sometimes called the More Options button at the bottom of your visualizations pane. Click those dots. This lets you access Power BI's marketplace of custom visuals, which is like adding new tools to your toolbox. In the search bar that appears, type Gantt. You'll notice a few options, but today we're going to use Gantt by Lingaro. It's free, it's flexible, and it's especially good for project tracking. Go ahead and click it to add it to your visuals. It might take a few seconds to load, but just be patient. Once it's there, you'll see it right with your other chart types. Now click on the Gantt by Lingaro visual to place it onto your report canvas. This is the stage where you start connecting your data with the chart, and each field here serves a specific purpose. Let's break it down. Start by putting your task name field in the category section. Think of category as the label that represents each row in your Gantt chart, so it's really important you put your task names here, since each one will display as a separate bar on the timeline. This makes your chart readable at a glance. For the extra column, use your duration field. Duration tells Power BI how long each task should last and populates those bars accordingly. If you skip this, your chart won't accurately show how tasks stretch across days or weeks, so definitely don't miss this step. Next, in the Legend section, put your status field. The legend is what adds color coding to your tasks, letting you see immediately what's completed in progress or maybe delayed. It's a quick visual cue that makes your chart super useful when you're sharing updates or reporting to a team. Moving on, assign your start date field to the start date input and your end date field to the end date input. These are crucial because they determine exactly where each task begins and ends along the timeline. If your start or end dates are missing, your Gantt chart won't be able to line things up correctly, so double check your data here. In the phases field, add your first dependency. Mapping dependencies lets you show which tasks rely on something else before they can begin. Really useful if you're managing a project with lots of moving parts that need to happen in a certain order. If you're new to dependencies, think of it like a relay race. Some runners can't start until someone else finishes. And finally, in the sort by field, put your task ID. Sorting by task ID ensures your tasks display in the right sequence, making your chart logical and clear rather than jumping around randomly. It's a small touch, but makes a big difference in how easy your Gantt is to read. When you've filled in all these fields, that's it. You'll instantly see your Gantt chart come to life on your report page, ready to be shared, filtered, and explored. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this walkthrough helpful, please hit that like button. And if you have any questions about Power BI or Gantt charts, drop a comment below. I check them regularly and love helping out. And make sure you subscribe for more tips and tutorials just like this. See you in the next video.